In the past, when we had exponential equations, we were able to rewrite each side of the equation so that each expression was built off of the same base, and then we were able to find the equation just from those powers. But what if that isn't the case? Well, when you have an equation, you can actually apply a logarithm as long as it's the same base to both sides and get something equivalent that you can work. Now that's going to be as long as each side is a positive value. Right? So look at this guy. 3 to the x is equal to 7. Well, 3 and 7 don't have a common base. But what we can do is that we can apply a log to both sides. And typically we stick with the common log or the natural log. And so I tend to use the natural log, but it really doesn't matter. And you'll see. So I'm going to take the natural log of the left side, and I'm going to take the natural log of the right side. And you might be wondering, why are we doing this? This is making things more complicated. Well, there is one property of logarithms that really helps us out. And that's a property that says, if you have a power inside a logarithm, you can write that out in front as a factor. So since our variables are up in the power, by using the log and those properties, we're able to write that guy in front. So this now becomes x times the natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of 7. And keep in mind that the natural log of 3 and the natural log of 7 are just numbers. You don't want to convert them to decimals. Leave them exactly as they are because these are exact values. So in order for us to get x by itself, we just need to divide both sides by this factor of the natural log of 3, just like this. So here at the end, x is equal to the natural log of 7 over the natural log of 3. Now be careful. Do not try to cross out natural log because it's not a factor. Okay? You've got to keep it like this. And this, this is an exact value. And a lot of times when you're doing these problems for me and for my math lab, they want you to write this as a, as a decimal, rounded to three decimal places. So let's see what that looks like. All right, so here we're going to do the natural log of 7. Make sure that you remember to close up the parentheses for that natural log, and then divide by the natural log of 3 and close up those parentheses. So we get that x is approximately one point. 7, 7, 1. But let's check this, right? It's very easy to make mistakes, and believe me, I know about making mistakes. So I'm saying that if I replace this x with 1.771, I'll get something that is going to be close to, but probably not exactly, 7. So 3 raised to the 1.771. And yeah, I, I get a value that's very, very close to 7, so I know that I'm on the right track. I feel really good about my answer. Now, you might have questioned my choice to use the natural log. You may think that feels very unnatural. Well, here's what you can do. You could instead use the common log and say log of 3 to the x is equal to log of 7, like this. Again, the same property for logarithms will apply. This power gets to be written out in front. So this becomes x times the log of 3 is equal to the log of 7. And just like we have with the natural log, I can divide both sides by the log of 3. Because again, it's just a number. Okay, that's all it is. So x as an exact value is log of 7 over the log of 3. And if we come back to our calculator and we type that in, we do log of 7, close parentheses, divided by log of 3, we get the same decimal value that we had up here. And we already know that it works out. So either of these answers is, is going to be okay. Let's take a look at this next one. 5 to the 2x plus 3 is equal to 2. So to solve this one, it'd be nice if we could rewrite each side to have the same base. But 5 and 2 don't have a common base. Instead, let's use logs. Apply log on both sides. 
So I'm going to say the natural log of 5 to the 2x plus 3 is equal to the natural log of 2. And again, the reason we do that is so that we can now take this power that contains our variable and write it in front. So this becomes, well, here's where you got to be careful, because a lot of times students are going to write this. They'll say 2x plus 3 natural log of 5 equals natural log of 2. Now if you do this, this is very, very bad because it only looks like the natural log of 5 is connected to the 3 when it should be connected to the entire group. So we need to use parentheses like that. And now we're going to be okay. So we've got a couple ways of solving this. You could divide both sides by the natural log of 5 and then go through the process of solving for x. If you do that, it's got to look kind of messy. Instead, and so that we can do well in the next examples coming up, I want us to go ahead and distribute. So when we use when we distribute, we get 2x times the natural log of 5 plus 3 times the natural log of 5. All right? Now, if you notice, this is the only place where we see x. Everything else is just a number. Even if it's inside of a natural log, that is still just a number. So let's start peeling away these layers, starting with the stuff that's not even connected to the x. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 natural log of 5 on both sides. Okay, no big deal about that. You're just moving terms from one side to the other. And so now we have 2x natural log of 5 equals the natural log of 2 minus 3 natural log of 5. And then, how do we get x by itself? Well, there are two things that are keeping x from being by itself. And those are the factors 2 and the natural log of 5. So since everything here is connected through multiplication, I can just divide both sides by those two factors. So divide by 2 natural log of 5. And that's going to be a product that you're dividing by. So divide by 2 natural log of 5. So as long as we've done everything correctly, this expression is the exact value for the solution to this equation. It's the exact value. But again, we want to make sure that we can get the decimal approximation. Now, if you're doing this for me for a test and you get all the way here, I'm, I'm going to be thrilled. And all you need to do to get full credit is to do one last thing, which is to type it into your calculator and get uh, the decimal approximation. Be mindful of one thing, though. Use parentheses for your numerator and for your denominator here, because it's not just a single logarithm. It's, a, it's got more stuff to it. So open up parentheses, and let's type this in. So that's natural log of 2. Again, notice that natural log has its own set of parentheses, so close that minus 3 natural log of 5. I'm going to close parentheses for that natural log. I'm going to close parentheses for my big fraction. So if you need to, you can see this as, you know, how do my parentheses look in terms of the graphing calculator. Natural log gives you parentheses, but those light blue ones are going to be for the big numerator. Divide by parentheses for my denominator, 2 natural log Five. Close the natural log, close the denominator, and here's what we get. So this is saying that the answer is approximately approximately negative 1.285 when rounded to the nearest thousandth. Now let's check this. So I'm going to take negative 1.285. I'm going to store this in for x. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to type my original expression. Let's see if I can get this to equal 2. So 5 raised to the group, so parentheses, 2x plus 3. 
and we get something that's a little bit less than two, but it's pretty close to let me know that what I did on the calculator is good. So the key things to watch out for are your signs and making sure that you can type things into the calculator. So be ready, practice using your calculator, know where your buttons are, know how to close your parentheses and set it up, and you're going to be okay.